the world is in a serious long-term relationship with ice cream. It's the food we use when celebrating birthdays, little league wins, and other special occasions. Regardless of the situation, ice cream is there for us. Those who have spent time researching ice cream history know that there are a lot of competing stories out there on who invented ice cream, and most of them comes with conflicting information and little to no evidence to back up the claims. But if your quest for ice cream knowledge has left you with a brain freeze, you've come to the right place, as in this episode we've answered some of your most pressing ice cream-related questions. To have ice cream, you need to have a way to keep it cold. And in the days before refrigeration, that meant you needed ice if you wanted chilled food. It's tough to pinpoint the origin of ice cream or even the ancestors of ice cream, but the general consensus is that in the ancient world, people got ice a couple of different ways. Some harvested ice that formed on natural sources, but that wasn't always as easy as stepping outside into a wintry wonderland. In the ancient world, lakes didn't really freeze in the Mediterranean and Middle East, so they were getting glacial ice and snow from high up in the mountains. All the time and effort that went into collecting ice made it something that only the wealthiest people could afford. Getting ice in the desert, in places like ancient Egypt, was another story. Historians have found evidence that people would use evaporation for cooling purposes. For example, when you put water in a porous clay container and wrap it with a wet cloth, evaporation would pull the heat out of whatever was in there. Or, in desert areas where it would freeze at night, people would put out very shallow dishes filled with water and get a thin piece of ice that way. As with many aspects of food history, there's no way to definitively know who invented ice cream or which country it originated from. The first references to ice houses and actually eating snow come from 11th century BCE China. Then, around 200 BCE, there's a reference to people in China eating a combination of milk and rice that was frozen in the snow. For the move to something that more closely resembles our modern types of ice cream, we have the Persians to thanks. Around 400 BCE, they invented the predecessor to artificial refrigeration. A large pyramidal structure called a yakchal that used evaporation and insulation to keep things cool. By the 11th century C, Persians were making something called sharbat, which is probably the closest ancestor, at least linguistically, to ice cream and where the word sherbet comes from. Thanks to trading with the Indian Empire, Persians had access to sugar, which they combined with water and flavorings to create sharbat. The icy treat came to Europe through Moorish influence after the Crusades. It wasn't until the age of exploration, when white Europeans colonized the Americas, that modern ice cream made its debut. The Spanish Empire was the first European group to colonize the New World, and they got involved with sugar production and bringing chocolate and vanilla from Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula in the 16th century. Naples in Italy was also part of the Spanish Empire at the time, and sorbetto, or sorbet, originates there. French aristocrats started eating the frozen dessert next, followed by those in England, who froze combinations of milk and cream. By the 18th century, ice cream was all the rage in Europe. Using locally produced milk and cream, ice harvested from lakes, and the sugar and molasses that came through the Atlantic slave trade. Wealthy American colonists also had access to ice cream. People like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson had ice cream by getting ice cream pots imported from Europe. Presidential chef and a free black man from Philadelphia named Augustus Jackson is referred to as the father of ice cream. Though he isn't the person who invented ice cream, he's credited with inventing the modern method of manufacturing ice cream, that was to add salt to the ice to lower and control the temperature. But as Maria Panaritis pointed out in a 2019 article for the Philadelphia Inquirer, there are very few mentions of Jackson in any historical records, including newspaper archives. Though there are multiple present-day articles on Jackson's life, they provide conflicting information about what he did and when. Coincidentally, America's oldest ice cream brand is also based in Philadelphia. Bassett's Ice Cream has been in operation since 1861, opened its first shop in 1885, and moved into the city's iconic Reading Terminal Market when it opened in 1892. It's been serving up scoops in that location ever since.
While the ice cream trade started off small and highly localized, it took off once artificial refrigeration became available, first commercially, then in people's homes, and ice cream was suddenly more accessible to people of different socioeconomic classes. These days, you can find thousands of ice cream shops across the globe, packaged ice cream in supermarkets and corner stores, and ice cream trucks selling the chilled dessert to eager children. And you can pick from a profusion of flavors, including classics like vanilla and chocolate, modern favorites like milk and cookies, caramel macchiato, and truly weird ice cream flavors like cheddar cheese, cereal milk, lobster, and everything bagel. Ice cream's ubiquity hasn't diminished its allure. Like a lot of foods, ice cream has held on to its earlier connotation with the wealthy. Even though it's available all the time now, it still has this association with special occasions. So the next time you dish up some ice cream to serve alongside a birthday cake, you'll know why.